Well, howdy everyone, and today I'm taking a look at a lens which caught my attention over on eBay. The Mic 35mm f1.7, a little modern manual focus lens which is designed for mirrorless APS-C cameras. My new copy of the lens cost only about £70, or $90, US dollars, which could be very good value for money for a lens with such a fast aperture, if it turns out to be any good. On an APS-C camera, 35mm is a useful, standard focal length, wide-angle enough for general-purpose shooting, while giving you a good emphasis on your subject if you get a bit closer. And f1.7 is a nicely fast maximum aperture. It enables you to get noticeably out-of-focus backgrounds. It also lets in a good amount of light for shooting indoors, although oddly enough with this lens I didn't notice any difference in shutter speeds between when I was shooting at f1.7 and f2. Even though my backgrounds were slightly more out of focus at f1.7, so there's something odd going on with the lens's light transmission. As I mentioned, this lens will not work on digital SLR cameras at all only mirrorless cameras, and it will cover an APS-C image circle. And it's a fully manual lens, manual aperture control, manual focus, and no image stabilisation. As you can see, it's a pretty small lens, but it's made of metal, so it does feel nice and solid while still being lightweight, at under 200 grams. The aperture ring turns smoothly without any clicks at all, and doesn't give you many markings to show you where you are. The manual focus ring also turns very smoothly, and quite precisely, and gives you markings for focus distance. If you're new to using a manual focus lens, you'll have to practice a little bit to get your images nice and sharp, but the precision of this manual focus ring will help you, and modern digital cameras tend to have a useful features like focus peaking to help you on your way. The front of the lens does not rotate as you change focus, which is helpful for people who use polarising or graduating filters. And the filter size is a small 49mm. The front lens cap is also made of metal and slips onto the front fairly securely. On the whole, this handy little lens seems to have been inspired by the designs of the 1960s. And for a manual focus lens, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Apart from the slightly questionable aperturing, it handles really well. Well, hopefully the time warp design of the lens's body isn't reflected in its optics. Let's look at the picture quality. On the demanding playing field of a 24 megapixel APS-C camera, my little Canon EOS M3. At f1.7, the lens is a little soft in the middle, with slightly low contrast levels. I also noticed a slightly red colour tint to its images. The good news is that, over in the corners, the image doesn't seem to be any worse. We're seeing some darkness here, but no chromatic aberration. Stop down to f2 for a tiny improvement in the corners, and a more noticeable one in the middle of the image. At f2.8, the lens is very sharp in the middle, and, well, sharp in the corners. It's very slightly sharper again at f4, and at apertures down to f8. From f11, softness will begin to creep in due to the effects of diffraction on a 24 megapixel APS-C camera. So essentially, the lens performs just okay at its widest apertures, but it's quite capable when it's topped down. I would like to have seen slightly better contrast in its images, though. Let's see about distortion and vignetting. A couple of things are noticeable here. Firstly, the lens is projecting a stronger barrel distortion than normal for a standard lens, which is a slight annoyance. Also, there's quite prominent vignetting at f1.7, especially in the top of the image. This is pretty strange. I tested a bunch of other lenses at the same time as this one, and none of the others showed this, and there were no shadows across my test chart. The bothersome thing is that vignetting confined to the top of your images will likely show up in pictures when you can see the sky. Anyway, stop down to f2 for slightly reduced vignetting, and at f2.8 it's substantially reduced. This lens can focus as closely as 30cm, about average for a 35mm lens. At closer distances, the lens is a bit softer, as you can see here. However, you only need to stop down to f2 to already see an improvement, and at f2.8, the image is finally sharp. 
Let's see how the lens performs against bright light. There's quite a drop in contrast, and rather a lot of flaring, although the pattern does at least look nice and soft. Not a great performance here. Finally, bokeh. While this lens doesn't exactly blow your backgrounds off the face of the earth, it is able to give some good separation, and those out of focus backgrounds generally look fairly soft. I didn't notice any serious problems. So, for $90, is the little mic lens worth it? Maybe. Its picture quality doesn't exactly impress, with strange top-heavy vignetting, barrel distortion, and problems with flaring, but it's nice and small, and its image quality is at least usable from f1.7, and it's very sharp from about f2.8. You'll be perfectly able to get some nice, maybe even striking, images with this piece of kit, so I reckon it's good enough value for money. Considering its low price, it could be a great option for beginner photographers, but would a beginner want to work with a manual focus lens? We'll have to wait and see how well it sells, I suppose.